Welcome to ElectronLine. In the previous video, we saw how we took the branch circuit, took the bottom part of the branch circuit and converted from delta to a Y conversion. And here are the results of that conversion where we calculated Z1, Z2, and Z3. Now we're going to continue by trying to calculate the total impedance of the entire circuit. So first what we're going to do is calculate Z sub A, which is combining these two. Then we calculate Z sub B, which is combining those two. Then we're going to find the parallel conversion from ZA, ZB. We're going to calculate the parallel impedance on these two combined. Then we're going to add those two together in series with Z3. And then finally, we're going to take the right impedance, Z sub R, the impedance on the right side, combine it with the minus J2, which is the X sub C on the left side here. And of course, they're in parallel to find the total impedance. So that's the plan of attack. We have to do each one of those one at a time. Starting with Z sub A, that's simply a sum of the two together because they're in series. So that would be 2 plus Z1, which is equal to 2 plus Z1. Uh, that would be in this format, would be easier to add. So we take 1 minus J, which is equal to 3 minus J, which is equal to, and just in case, and we're going to need it to put into the amplitude or magnitude and phase angle format. So that would be uh, the square root of 10, which is 3.16, with a phase angle of, let's see, 1 divided by 3, take the tangent of that, and it's a minus 18.43 degrees. All right, so now we found Z sub A. Now we're ready to find Z sub B. Z sub B is equal to the sum of these two right here, J4 and Z2. So it would be uh, J4 plus Z2, which is equal to J4 plus Z2 in this format, minus 0 0.5. Oop. Well, we've got minus 0 0.5 and minus J0.5. So that would be equal to, uh, let's see, that's a J. So it would be minus 0 0.5 and a plus J3.5. And then we'll convert that into the magnitude and phase angle format. So 3.5 squared plus 0.5 squared. Take the square root of that, which is 3.54. Now we got to be careful because there's negative sign in there. So sometimes it's better to pull the negative sign out. So let's do that. So we're going to do that. Put the negative in front. Make this negative right here. So this negative times this negative makes that a positive. But by doing that, it makes it a little bit easier to manipulate it and find the phase angle. So now let's find the phase angle of this and then applying a negative sign to that. That's basically adding 180 degrees to that. So the phase angle of this we get, that's a 3.5 divided by 0.5, that's 7, take the inverse tangent of that, which is 81.87 degrees. Now, I'm going to put the negative in front here, that would be 80, and that would be negative angle, whoop, I keep forgetting my negative, so negative 81.87 degrees. But now with this negative here, think about it this way, if you draw the, the phases, so that would be something that kind of looks like this. This would be the positive 3.54 with a phase angle of negative 81 degrees. But when we multiply times a negative one, that, that brings it over to this direction. And so basically, we can either add or subtract 180 degrees to this to get rid of the negative sign. So this can also be written as 3.54 with a phase angle of either you add 180 or subtract 180 degrees from that. So let's go ahead and add 180 degrees. So plus 180, that gives us a phase angle of 98.13 degrees with a positive 98.13 degrees. So that's how I like to manipulate that negative sign when it's a negative real part and then, a, and a, or I should say, uh, what we have here? Yeah, a negative real part and a positive imaginary part. I like to work with the angles like that. Now when we have ZA, and ZB, now we're going to calculate the total impedance of these two branches together. So now we're going to take the parallel ZA, ZB branch. So ZA parallel to ZB, that's equal to the product over the sum. 
So we're going to multiply these two together and then we're going to add the two together. So the product would be 3.16 with a phase angle of minus 18.43 degrees. And we multiply that times 3.54 with a phase angle of 98.13 degrees. Notice how that makes it a little bit easier to work with it. And then we divide that by the sum. Now the sum z sub a would be right here. That would be 3 minus j. And we're going to add that to z sub b. And z sub b would be, let's see here, that would be a minus 0 0.5 and a plus j 3.5. Okay, when we add these two together right here, that would be, it's probably easier to do it like this, 3 minus 0.5 is 2.5 plus j 2.5, and then when we combine those two in the uh, magnitude and phase angle format, it will look like this. So that's 2.5 squared times 2, take the square root, that gives us 3.54, so this would be 3.54 with a phase angle of, uh, let's see, 45 degrees. Okay, now when we work this out, so we have 3.16 times 3.54 divided by 3.54. Well, that would be uh, ZA parallel to ZB would be equal to 3.16 with a phase angle of 18.43. Plus 98.13 minus 45 gives us 34 degrees, 34.7 degrees, and that's positive. So let's go ahead and now put that into the real and imaginary part because we're going to have to add that to Z3. So let's convert that. So take the cosine of that times 3.16. That's a real part of 2.60 plus j and 34.7 take the sine of that times 3.16 we get 1.8 1.80 okay so this is z a z b in parallel now we're going to add that to z3 and that's this one right here to get the impedance on the right part of the circuit so z sub r is equal to ZA, ZB, added to Z3. So since we're adding, we're going to use this format, 2.6 plus J1.8, and we're going to add that plus to Z3, and Z3 is 1 plus J1. So when we add that, we get 3.6 and plus J2.8. And if we then write that into the magnitude and phase angle format, 3.6 squared plus 2.8 squared equals, take the square root, is 4.56 with a phase angle of 2.8 divided by 3.6. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 37.87 degrees. Now we're ready to go ahead and find the total impedance of the whole circuit by doing the last step, z total is simply x sub c, the minus j2, in parallel with this whole right part of the circuit. So z total is equal to the product x sub c times z on the right side of the circuit plus or divided by x sub c plus z on the right side of the circuit. So x sub c in magnitude and phase angle format is 2 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. We're going to multiply that times z sub r, which is right here, 4.56 with a phase angle of 37.87 degrees. Okay. And then we're going to divide that by x sub c, which is minus j2, added to z sub r, which is right here. That would be plus 3.6 and plus j2. 2.8. So when we combine that, we have minus 2 plus 2.8, so this can simply be written as J0.8. And then we can convert that into the magnitude and phase angle format, so 3.6 squared plus 
3.8 squared equals, take the square root, that gives us 3.69 at a phase angle of 0.8 divided by 3.6 and take the inverse tangent, that's 12.53 degrees. And finally, when we multiply all that out, we can get the total impedance of the circuit. That would be 2 times 4.56 divided by 3.69. That would be 2.47 with a phase angle of minus 90 plus 37.87 and then minus 12.53. That gives us a phase angle of minus 64 point six six degrees and that would be the final impedance of the entire circuit and that's how it's done